Frazier, he's become Lane, oh, the depot. Oh, that's right. You better mean mug after you dunk on somebody that way. Gonna run it down. He goes with it. Out of bio for the win. Yeah, welcome to the Five Reasons Sports Post Game Show, aka the Post Up on Five R. I'm your host, Roy Lay Shepherd, and I am joined today by my man Jonathan Ramakan, pulling double duty as both a panelist and the producer. So we appreciate him for that. The man, Canadian Air, Air Canada himself, Ariel Latias, fellow Kang, the California Kang, all the way out there on the West Coast. My man Brian Young, and my man Elvis himself, Daddy L. Cartagena. You had to watch that behavior, Rican boys, and know what that boy talking about out here, man. That's suavemente. So, Yo, fellas, who, huh? Who is, is someone like on a on an airplane tarmac right now? Like, I literally feel like Southwest seven hundred seven is about to take off. There's a ton of background noise. Yeah, it's definitely Jonathan Ramlakan. Somebody's vacuuming up. I think it's his maid. Uh, she's vacuuming up his room as we speak. That's because he's in a hurricane. That's what's happening with that hurricane flag. Obviously. Uh, but, yeah. So, fellas, you all had the pleasure of watching the Miami Heat lose to the Dallas Mavericks 107-99. to I watched bits and pieces of the third quarter, and I watched the entire fourth quarter, but I did not see one second of the first half. So you guys are going to illuminate me as to what the fuck went right and or wrong this game. So let's start with uh, – the man, the myth, the hurricane himself, Jonathan Ramakan. Uh, go ahead. You tell me what happened in the first half and how did it end up like this in the second half? Well, the first half was great. They were doing a really good job, you know, trapping Luca, you know, making the ball get out of his hands. I believe this was the lowest scoring first half of the season for him. I think seven points was the number and he had six in the first half. I might be wrong on that. Bam was coming out totally aggressive. Like he was destroying uh powell and putting him on the burners he just saw barbecue chicken every time he saw him he hit him with a little you know hezzy in and out got a little left hand layup he was able to get a little pull-up jumper in the middle too he was just doing really good and uh yurt came off the bench in that first quarter and gave us some pretty quality minutes him and gabe vincent have a really good connection that i think we should talk about a little bit later on here uh but they played well to the end the yurt gave us a good half um honestly it was all bam in the first half in my opinion third quarter came around heat just started shooting like shit like, outside of Jimmy Butler, it was dog shit. He was the only person pretty much giving you anything. I think he had, like, 10 in the third quarter and then, like, 14 in the fourth quarter. So he pretty much was our whole second half. The Heat just absolutely shit the bed when it came to this, you know, second half. We weren't defending right. We were turning over the ball. We gave up so many offensive rebounds, and I feel like that was one of the main reasons we lost, was we were just giving, giving up too many chances. We can't hustle back, help the helper, you know, trap Luka and try to do these things, make these higher for plays, like Ariel says, or a higher for team and then not get the defensive rebound because then we're just going to do that for about 75 seconds straight, which isn't going to work out for anybody. I don't care who you are, but it was a, uh, it was a pretty shitty game. The heat lost their five game losing streak. And Hey, we're going to have losses like this. The heat shouldn't shoot. Well, it wasn't the best night for everybody outside of Bam and Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry as well. Like, I felt like our help, our big three played well. Uh, just no help outside of that. And it was a game that you can see that they missed Tyler hero just a bit. Yeah. Thank you, somebody, for the $2 donation. He said, Victor, hurry back and tell all the, take all the trash Gabe's minutes. Gadiel Cartagena, as the resident uh, – no, Kendall. Uh, as the resident Gabe Vincent Stan, was he really that bad tonight? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to shoot this many shots and miss that many shots, it's going to be a bad game. And I think this is one of the few games that Gabe didn't give you much defensively. Like, the rotations were not crisp. He was fouling a lot, like, out of position a lot of times. Uh, just not all the way there. And that was, defensively, that was the case for a lot of players tonight. Felt like the Mavs were just able to get to whatever it is that they wanted. But Gabe in specific, like, yes, he brings more as a playmaker. Like, he's the main reason why Yurt had those 11 points and whatever it may be. But at the same time, this was a poor shooting night. Like, you can call a spade a spade. It's That is what it is. It was a bad shooting night for everybody. So if you're going to say Gabe's too inconsistent, just go ahead and throw Struess and Duncan in there too. Bad shooting night. Didn't get the shots off that you wanted to. Um, and, yeah, you just got to play better. Yeah, every time you slander Ethan in the comments, I'm definitely going to bring that shit up. Uh, that Me and Ramakar were fighting to see who was going to put it up. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. Just box score watching. It seemed like the first third quarter – <laughs> nope uh 
it seemed like the first third quarter that we've had in quite some time. We thought that had become a thing of the past, and it just kind of came back tonight with a vengeance. Uh, Brian, what did you see from tonight's game, and how did it turn out like this? Uh, yeah, so it felt like a tale of two different teams. Like, that first half, I thought that they were playing really well, Bam specifically. Um, I didn't – I mean, I don't want to say I didn't like it. Like, you get the strategy of trying to get the ball out of Lucas' hands, right? You're going to double him basically every time he has the ball. And we've seen them do that against other stars. The problem is Luca is such a good passer that he's going to find whoever's open. And if he's, it's, if it's not a direct assist, it's, assist it's going to be a hockey assist, right? And I think that kind of showed itself in the fact that the Mavs shot so many more threes than the Heat did tonight. I mean, the difference in that, obviously, is the Heat just didn't shoot well to begin. <laughs> that is an after post game. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> but but getting the ball or forcing the ball out of Lucas' hands, like I was saying, definitely contributed to that disparity and just the volume of threes. And if you're going to take, I don't know, I think they took like 15, 14 more threes than he did tonight, you don't have to hit a high percentage of those to, you know, to, to, to feel the benefit of that. So just the math problem, right? So coming out in the second half, we saw that the third quarter they had that just offensive drought. And I think that that's in large part because they were missing Tyler Hero. Uh, no Caleb Martin, so you're missing a good portion of your bench scoring. Uh, Bam kind of disappeared in the sense that, you know, we didn't really see that same aggressiveness that we saw in the first half. And that was the game, man. Like, it happens. Uh, it, it's weird. I don't feel too, too bad about this loss just because they were playing well to begin with. But it's whatever. It is what it is. I think it's hard to feel bad after this loss because they won five games in a row before this. Like, so it's it's easy. It happens. We take a loss every now and then. It, 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 it's a loss. I want to thank SRT Dre for the 199 dono. Uh, he said second round exit. And uh, so appreciate you, S, uh, SRT Dre, for the negativity after a five game winning streak after one bad, uh, no, after a loss that we obviously didn't shoot well for. It was ugly, um, though. Like, it was ugly basketball, I have to say. I really hope that was the ugliest half of basketball we play all year because that was. Whew. It might, it might not be like there's going to be halves that we shoot like shit. And, you know, if our stars are playing decent and then nobody else is, is not playing like, you know, we're a team that's relying on ball movement, making sure that our support is really well. We talk about this team's depth, but, you know, it's some games it just won't be there. And during a seven game series, there might be a game or two that it won't be there. But we want to talk about what the large sample size is. So it's a fucking loss. We lost one game. It's not that big of a deal. I, think, I actually uh, think the world is ending. Yeah, so the, I think the bigger problem, yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. But thank God for Duncan Robinson being on this roster to save us from the treachery that would have been. Oh, the gravity is really what saved them tonight. Oh, obviously, bro, obviously. <laughs> uh, one of the things, Alex Lewis for the 499, don't know. He says, Spo let our backups get killed in the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> we let the up get killed? By Kleber uh, to the end game because he doesn't have a respectable jump shot. Listen, our uh, – our bench was comprised of Hayward, Highsmith, Omer, Year Seven, Gabe Vincent, and Max Struess. That was the bench. They're going to get killed. <laughs> okay, like Tyler Hero, Dwayne Detman. That's our real bench. Like we didn't have that out there tonight. Oh, uh, <laughs> shout out to the Kane Gang. Want to thank my boy Sandal <laughs> for the five dollar dono. He said we still getting area of Black History Month spoken word for him tonight. Uh, for sure. He's about to give it to you right now. Uh, Ariel, go ahead and tell the people about how lovely it is to be a black man in America. That's not something I can relate to, but I'm sure it's fantastic, as I've heard from, uh, you know, the Kang gang on here. I appreciate y'all. Um, if y'all want the the spoken word poem, that, that's going to be a uh, post-game, off-air off type thing, because I'm here to talk basketball. Um, y'all are right, man. Gad nailed it that third quarter was brutal i don't know if the third was worth worse than the fourth i think they got outscored by 11 in the third but they were both really bad royal you tuned in just in time i actually think it's probably royal's fault because the heat were playing well until he tuned into that game uh bam was aggressive early i thought you know the heat dominated the paint they were killing the the mavs on the on the glass they were uh killing them in points in the paint and that kind of translated to the end of the game but it felt it felt like it stabilized from the midpoint of the third quarter and on uh through the end of the game <clears throat> and just the heat were generally controlling it you get into the fourth quarter and at this point like 
it's a significant concern. The late game offense is a real concern for this team because it feels like every time they get into a close game, comes down the stretch or they're trailing and they need offense, it's like it's just not there. Everything, they, everything that they were doing for the three quarters leading up to that point, it just evaporates. They're not going to BAM anymore, and a lot of that's on him. He needs to demand the basketball. But, I mean, they're not going to BAM anymore. Uh, the movement isn't there. I, I get the defense is generally tightened up towards the end of game, so that's a little bit, you know, part of that is due to that. But at the end of the day, I mean, you got Eric Spolster, you got Kyle Lowry, you got Jimmy Butler, you got shooters. Like, you should be able to run competent offense um, at the end of the game. And, and you know, you get to you get to the end there, you get outscored by, what was it, I think, I think the, the Mavericks had 52 points from the three-point line. I think they made 18. So they had 52 points or 54 points from the three-point line. The Heat had 21 points from the three-point line. They're the best uh, three-point shooting team by percentage in the NBA. If you're going to get out shot like that, you're probably going to lose the game. The Heat were not able to get stops at the end of the game. They couldn't. There was no defensive possession that they didn't foul or, or didn't get scored on. And so, like, I mean, that's just the recipe for disaster. It's an annoying loss. It's not a terrible loss. Uh, but I think the Heat should have won that game. I mean, like, they were they, the recipe was there. They were sending a ton of help at Luka Doncic. It was working. And then Luka kind of figured it out, and the Heat didn't adjust, and that was the game. Yeah, so I want to thank Jet Law for the $2 don't know. He said, small ball cost us the game. Play Yurt and Bam. Um, play Yurt and Bam. I'm sorry. That's not what cost them the game. They killed them on the boards. That's not what cost them the game. What cost them the game is that they couldn't Luka, make a damn shot. <laughs> they couldn't make a three, and then Luca figured out that they're sending two to the ball every single time. So we're gonna spread it out. I'm gonna skip past it, and somebody's gonna be open. And the Mavs hit their threes. I mean, if the Mavs make their free throws, the Heat get blown out tonight. So yep. For sure. Uh, so I want to thank the Unidentified Celebrity Review for the five dollar don't know. Consistency is key, ladies and gentlemen. As always, my man is always here every night, like clockwork. Big news. Duncan Robinson has been cast as the lead bum in with honors Harvard Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I don't know if that's a conversation that needs to be addressed tonight because it seems like a common theme, but I mean, it is what it is. Let's talk about uh let's talk about Duncan Robinson. Uh two of six tonight, one of five. What did not go right for him? It's time, Jonathan. Jonathan, what is it time for? Gad, explain. <laughs> <laughs> I had four Oreos and I ate one. Now I have three. Uh, this is me in middle school on my Twitter. I was bored, waiting for my parents to pick me up from school after practice. And this is me live tweeting my life. I am glad that you guys could experience that with me. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Heat's next draft pick. I, do you no, it's see, not. Do you no, see it's the not. form on that defense? Okay. Listen, right hand. All ball, of course. And the vert, ladies and gentlemen. Look how high that boy. That's at least 40. That's at least 40 that I see there. I uh, no. That's a foul. Not tw- that's not a foul. Uh, come on, man. Look at that's all ball, baby. Do not disrespect me like that. Tonight's refs would have called that. Oh, yes, for sure. But he was being aggressive on defense, like the primary sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Post Game Show. And that is a aggressive insurance. So we want to make sure that we thank Miss Lynette by visiting her website at www.insurancebylynette.com or giving her a phone call at 954 581 8800 and mentioning five reasons so you can sign up for that free vacation voucher to the destination of your choice. So we want to thank Miss Annette for sponsoring the show. Great as always. We'll be talking about her later on. Why are we putting up gas tweets? I put the bad in badminton. No, honestly, fire it up. That, I mean, I, I do not asso- I do not associate with middle school me, by the way. That is a whole different person. <laughs> oh, oh, I I mean, I I would feel that. I feel that. Middle school me is savage. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm more tame as an adult. Thank you, Jason Adeboile, for the 499. Don't know. He said the problem with our offense today was because Dunk and Struess were getting cooked on D. That's why Depot would be very important. Need more two-way players. Yeah, so we're about to get into the uh, Duncan conversation. Uh, Ramon Khan, was Duncan as bad as normal? Was he more bad or was he just, you know, like was he not the problem or was it just everybody? Um, I just felt like he was just non-existent. Like usually Duncan will give you like, some bad misses, right? But Dallas does a really good job of gobbling up three-point shots, and they were just making it really tough on him one. Uh, but overall, I felt like, you know, it was a shitty game from him overall, but he only had one foul in the third quarter, I think. So, yeah, it wasn't as dog shit as normal, I guess, you know. But, yeah, still pretty bad. Oh, like Kendall said, that boy trash. <laughs> yeah, was this a normal Duncan trash game? Was it more trash than normal uh, than, than we're accustomed to? 
Like, what was it with Duncan tonight? Why are people so pissed off at him? We, we have breaking news real quick. Uh, yeah, the Heat just signed Javante Smart to a two-way, um, which people are going to be asking who's Javante Smart. He's a dude with a really big forehead who's low-key a hooper <laughs> um, from Summer League. He's been tearing it up since he got back from the Bucks, uh, and he's been in Sioux Falls. I think he has back-to-back, back-to-back 30-point games just – off the, I've watched actually the last two games, so I've watched him tear it up. He's a good shooter, and there's some movement shooting there, so I do like that signing. Uh, that wasn't sure if we needed a guard, but I guess they feel confident in Keith coming back unless they sign a buyout for. But anyways, to Duncan Robinson. Um, yeah, I don't really think he was like too much of an issue tonight. I think the issue for me is something that we've kind of been tracking a little bit. Like Spo just doesn't trust this man. He's willing to play anybody else over him in crucial moments, and that's something that is really telling to me. <laughs> we got the Kendall meme, of course. Um, yeah, that that boy trash. Like, we've kind of been saying this on the show. Like, we don't agree with the type of specialist that we've been rolling out there a little bit. But the thing with Duncan is, like, if Spo can't trust him, why, like, what is the point? Like, I just don't see, like, he's not getting his shots off at will. It's just... He does, like, little things well, I guess. Like, maybe he's better than Struess, in my opinion, overall, because Struess doesn't really play defense at all. Duncan, at least, there's a concerted effort to not be a liability. Um, but it's just, what else, what is the point? Like, I just don't understand why there's such a big role and such a big fuss made about this guy. He's just a role player. Jonathan said it a few games ago. He's a role player. The contract, honestly, it is what it is. Not my money. I don't care about it. We need to, we need to get contract on, a contract on this team. He's a role player, uh, doing role player things. It's going to be good games, bad games, whatever it is. Don't really care all that much. He's just negligible to me at this point. Yeah, like, I, I think I agree. Like, at this point, like, Duncan Robinson, I was like this about Tyler Hero last year. It's not so much the case this year, but I'm like this with Duncan Robinson. It doesn't matter if Duncan Robinson plays well or it doesn't matter if Duncan Robinson plays terrible. He's not. He has no impact on whether we win or lose the game. And I think that's where I am with Duncan Robinson. Like, I don't give a shit what Duncan Robinson does anymore. But when he plays like this, it just kind of makes When he plays you... well, we, we're a really, really good team. But when he plays poorly, like, I feel we're like it's really never the really reason that we team. lost. Yeah, when, when he plays poorly, we're still a really, really good team. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, he, he's not moving the needle well, anyway. Well, they don't, they don't depend on him anymore. Like, the, the offense isn't Duncan, Duncan, Duncan at, like it was last year, right? Like, they're not running 10 million actions to try to spring Duncan every single time. Babs not looking for him every single time. That's not what the offense is anymore. So, you're right. It, they can withstand a bad Duncan game because he's only going to end up playing, like, 18 minutes, and it won't matter. <laughs> Brian, go, go ahead and talk, bro. If people want to hear your voice. Yeah, that boy trash. I mean, it feels like he's all, you know, <laughs> uh, But you're right, Roy. Like, I, I felt the same way. Like, Duncan wasn't good today, but I don't feel that he was the reason they lost. It was kind of, eh, you know, it starts off horrible, and then you don't play him, and it's it's on everybody else to win the game. And in fairness, like, he would have been the best team in the East in spite of Duncan Robinson. Like, he's been pretty inconsistent this season, and I think that there are very few games you can point to this season where you say, damn, Doug, without Doug Robinson, they don't win that game. So at this point, it's whatever. He's a salary that, you know, will be used in the future for blockbuster trades, looking at the black man who will not live in Utah for the rest of his life because he's <laughs> Define, <laughs> define <laughs> blockbuster. Define blockbuster? Like, are we I talking mean, blockbuster, like the, the adjective, the, the store that <laughs> closed up shop and is no there's longer one, with us? There's one blockbuster left in the world. Is it really oh, yeah, one? It's one. Is it in yeah. Utah? Because I, <laughs> I hope that might be a deal breaker. Out. That might be a deal breaker, baby. If they got blockbuster in Utah, I'd never want to leave. Unless I was playing yeah, with COVID true. spreading Rudy Gobert. But yeah, no, that's that's basically his only value to this team at this point, except for the hypothetical oh, gravity, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't care about Dr. Robinson. Fuck that guy. That's I mean, <laughs> but see, that's yeah, the, we've turned. <laughs> like that's the no, point no, that we've no. gone to. We're, was there was like never a, a turn. I, I didn't want to say it was never a turn. I've always felt that Duncan Robinson was trash. I just lied on here. So I just lied. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there, was, there was no turn. The truth, like, the truth yeah, is no. I love it. I love it <laughs> Thank so you, much. Thank you, Sasson, for the $2 donut. He said, who's better defensively, Eli Apple, Duncan, or Max? This is like picking between a turd, <laughs> drinking piss, and listening to Ariel Latias' voice. Uh, I'm taking the turd. <laughs> Me too. Every, twice on Sunday too. Uh, I think Eli Apple. D- Duncan Absolutely. Robinson. Absolutely not. 
Eli Apple was toast in the thank, Super Bowl. Thank you, Jonathan. And still better than Duncan and Max. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, thank you, Jason Adebayo, for the four ninety nine. Don't know is that only reason he's on the team is as a salary filler for future trades. Don't even worry about his three point percentage anymore. Don't need him. Don't want him. I think like at the at the beginning of the season there was hope when he first got the contract. There was hope for him, but I think like just watching him over the course of the season has left most Heat fans with like a. It's like we're emotionless about what he does anymore. Like it, it doesn't matter to anybody. And I think that's a, a weird place to be with one of our starters if we're talking about having championship aspirations. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure some people are still uh, pretty passionate about him. I'm looking at you, Sean Rochester. Uh, let's, talk about, <laughs> let's talk about Kyle Lowry. Uh, 13 points, four assists, four rebounds. Wasn't great. Wasn't terrible. Like, just solid as always. Is solid going to be good enough for us, Ariel? Like, in the playoffs, no. They're going to need another gear better than this um i is think they one? just i know there is there definitely is i think they need the gear that he was in for the majority of that first half i felt like he was really good um not really good but like he was good in the first half it's not about the numbers with him it's more like you know we've talked about this ad nauseum this it's the way that he anchors the lineups that he's in um tonight the heat's worst lineups felt like they were the the kyle lowry plus four dudes four undrafted guy lineups towards the end of the no towards the the early portions of the second and fourth quarters which is really where the mavericks i think kyle lowry ended up like minus 14 and i think it's mostly due to those lineups um look he he's not going to give it to you every single night he feels like at this stage in his career he's the kind of guy who's going to kind of you know, coast a little bit through the regular season. I would expect him to have another gear to get to in the playoffs. Um, he's done that in the past. So, again, I expect that from him. They do need more than this, though. Again, this Heat team is really good. They're one of the five best teams in the league. I think that's – I think it's hard to argue that. They're they're a top five team. Uh, but in order for them to be, like, truly successful in the playoffs, their th- four best players, uh, Jimmy, Bam, Kyle, and Tyler, need to be performing at their – their peak, I think, for them to like get out of the East or be really successful in the playoffs. And so Kyle Lowry giving you 13, four and four is not going to cut it in the playoffs. In the regular season, I don't really care. Again, it's a mid February game at home right before the All Star break. You're coming off of five straight wins. It's not that big a deal. Um, but you need more in the playoffs from Kyle Lowry for sure. Absolutely. I think everybody's going to have the same sentiment where it's not that big a deal to lose a game like this, but there are trends. And I said this last year, and I hate to compare this team to last year because they're totally different. This team is absolutely 1,000% better. But there are trends with this team, blowing big leads, not being able to close, late game execution on offense. These things have been a consistent theme throughout the season. And and I think people are ignoring them to a certain extent because sometimes, most of the time we're winning games. But these are the types of things that come back to bite you in the ass in the playoffs. Like, you're not going to have as many opportunities to blow these leads and come out with wins and shit like that. What's up? Um, I just want to jump in real quick. I, I want to say this. The blowing big leads, I think, is overblown, truthfully. Like, you watch basketball games, good teams, bad teams. Every team blows leads all the time. What I gr- agree with in, in terms of what you just said, what's concerning for the playoffs is what we talked about earlier. It's the late game offense. That's an actual issue. That's something that has to iron out. Blowing big leads in today's NBA happens all the time. Happens in almost every game. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. I care about when the Heat do it. Ramakan, do any of those things kind of like worry you more like as the season goes on? Like what's the one thing that kind of sticks out to you is, that could be like the sore thumb uh, for this team? If Jimmy Butler isn't going to get the whistle called, what's going to be the offense down the down the thing? I, I mean, I'm just kind of echoing Ariel, but um, yeah, that's, that's what it is, right? We don't have like a guy that we can go to that will for sure get you a bucket because – if the whistle isn't being blown and Jimmy Butler isn't getting a foul called, I'm not super, super confident in him always making the shot. He's either on or he's off. Like tonight he was one, he was on, right? It was tonight where he was hitting everything. He was hitting his jumpers. He was hitting most of his free throws. He was on tonight. But if he's off and we can't go over and rely on him, we're down six or seven points with like two minutes to go. How are we going to manufacture points really fast? If Tyler Hero is not that guy right now or yet, we still kind of have that hole and it's still too team oriented. And when it comes to the end of the games, like it's a lot of more isolation ball, right? Teams aren't running quite as many sets. It's a lot more, Hey, our star versus their star. So if it's in that situation, we, we kind of have to continue to make sure that we're just setting up the best opportunity, creating the best looks and not freezing the ball towards the end of the game. Yeah. 
Uh, I I do agree with that. I think uh, the Jimmy Butler iso ball down the stretch is – I mean, it's effective, but it's not going to be a can't-miss uh, strategy going into the playoffs. Uh, Gat, uh, well, before we get to you, thank you, Alex Lewis, for the 199 dono. He said, Kyle messed up my parlay. I needed eight assists. Poor parlay. We're so sorry to hear that. Thank you for giving us money instead. Gaddy L. Cardano, which one of those things kind of uh, stretches you out the most when it comes to looking forward into the playoffs? Like, what warts kind of stick out more so in your opinion? Yeah, it's just the late game offense and also Jimmy and Bam learning how to coexist offensively. They've been doing a really good job of it recently. Um, but it feels like I mean they're 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 able to take turns, right? Like it's like one pick and cho- picks and chooses when to go, the other picks and chooses where to go. I think it's more so just getting that supporting cast involved now because we've seen it for the last few games against some okay, some bad defenses. Um, I want to see it over the stretch after the All Star break. They have like five, six straight games against really tough opponents. I want to see if Jimmy and Bam can coexist and thrive in that atmosphere, in that environment. And then if they can do that, I'll feel more confident in this team. But I think you also need to add another option into the fold um, in terms of late game offense. You have to find someone else you can go to, whether it's Hero, whether it's Lowry, whether it's Bam, whether it's Victor Oladipo, if he's healthy, whoever it may be, you just need to add someone else because this putting the entire world on Jimmy's shoulders at the end of games is not going to cut it come playoff time. I think they'll be able to to, to work around that because they have in the past. Uh, if you look at the bubble, I mean, it became a three-headed monster to close games. Um, and that wasn't even, Bam wasn't even one of them, honestly, except for a few games. So right. just add, add another player into that mix and you should be okay. Um, but I need to see it to believe it. So we'll see. Yeah. Brian, uh, what work kind of sticks out to you the most? Uh, for me, it's also the offense. I just... We've seen it so many times this season where they have stretches where the offense kind of bogs down. You really are basically relying on Jimmy Bulldog and his way to the free throw line. Um, I think the playoffs, it's going to be Tyler Hero getting those reps. Whether or not people trust him, whether or not people think he can be that guy, I think okay. we're going to see. I think he's going to get those shots. He's going to be the guy to make plays in in, in, in close games in the playoffs. Um I don't know how it's going to work out. I think it would be great if you were able to re- rely on Kyle or Vic or Bam to be, you know, that other option. I, I just don't know if we're going to see it. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at. And, you know, it could totally work out. Like, I don't – I'm not saying it's, you know, a horrible spot to be in. We've seen Tyler, you know, make tough shots all season. You know, we've seen him, we've seen him bidge in fourth quarters before. So it's just eh. – <laughs> I, I support any comment. I support any comment that is advocated for us getting super chat money. Also, while you guys sitting in here, make sure you like and subscribe to the Five Reasons Sports Network. Uh, yeah, just do it. Just like the video, bro. Thanks. Um, please. please. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've seen his name enough times that warrants conversation. Goran Dragic. Like I don't know why people are putting that in there. Of course, there people were comparing him to Gabe earlier when we were talking about Gabe. I still would prefer Gabe. Um, like, I don't know what people believe Goran Dragic is going to provide that isn't already on the roster. Maybe I'm blind. So we're going to start with Brian this time. Brian, uh, are you an advocate of bringing Goran Dragic on? Do you believe he has value here in any capacity? Nope. And I, I guess I just saying, I know everybody loves Goran, whatever. But I just, where would he play? Like, if Vic is coming back, Hero's going to be back soon. Uh, where, where does he play? Where does he get the minutes? Like, I, I'm just afraid of that becoming another dead roster spot, and I don't see the value if you can get. <clears throat> and he, the problem is the buyout market kind of sucks at the moment. I don't know who it else. It really sucks. It's legitimately yeah. horrible. It's like no, no, me, me and Royal A. Shepard are the top forwards on the buyout market right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel bad. that. Like, I, I guess Derek Favors might get bought out in my head. I'm like, I guess that might be an option just – as a method of saving PJ's legs if he gets hurt or but like Eric Favors isn't, isn't gonna do shit for you. I just man, nah, let Goron be somewhere where you can get minutes and play and you know would maybe win a championship. Like I'm not eh pass. <laughs> Gat, you you bringing Goron back for the vibes? That's the only reason you're bringing him back, right? Is literally for the vibes. So if you are completely confident that Markeith Morris can come back and be healthy as a four for the rest of the season by all means, bring the vibes. UD could use a partner on the bench, right? But outside of that, like, in terms of an actual basketball fit, there is legitimately zero argument. Like, you, we complain about Duncan, Tyler, and Struess. The absolute worst defender of that bunch is Goron, and it's not even close. We watch this 
last year. Like, we don't need to do this again. We love the guy with all of our heart. We're surprised that they didn't end up uh, retiring number seven, or at least some of us are. We love Goron, but no. I it's just for the vibes. Surprised. I can tell you who ain't surprised. You. <laughs> <laughs> was telling him that he can have number seven soon. He got here, Lord. Oh Lord, ladies and gentlemen, uh, clench your ass cheeks. We got a beautiful face, a melanated face, of course, because it's February. About to join this as soon as he turn on his camera. Until he does, we're gonna go to Jonathan Ramlakan. I throw him in. We turn on John. Uh, but yeah, go on, Drudges. I mean, I love the guy. Pretty much what Gat said. There's no spot for him on this team unless he's. I said this in the pregame show, unless he's just going to be sitting on the bench being like a UD role player, there's literally no use for him. And I would rather us just go get a four or something like that just to help bolster this team's size instead. Like, bring him back two years from now, three years from now, let him retire. Three years from for now? One, for a one How much time contract. do you think he has? <laughs> However oh my long he wants goodness gracious. To you hate Boron. We retire, we retire him here crying. and then that's it. But, uh... Thank you, somebody, for the $2 dono. Dragic is washed. We just need Victor and that D. Yes, sir. <laughs> you had to put that much emphasis on it. Uh, King Kendall, would you like to tell the world why uh, you have black on your screen? I am here to deliver a message. Keep okay. that little amphibian, reptile, <laughs> little baby-ass lizard the fuck away from this roster. He has... No necessities of being here. That is all. Y'all boys keep grinding. Y'all in the comments, stop being cheap bums. Put some money up. Black That's Lives so Matter, good. Black History Much, Kang Gang over everything. And from my boy Brian, Sue Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Can't do that. Don't do that. Uh, we are. What a guy. A peace-loving community. <laughs> we don't pick sides. <laughs> I love how they're, came they're good down. people on both sides. We're cool with everybody. Good, yeah, cool with everybody. Uh, Ari Latias, good luck following that. But uh, people talk about please no gogi slander. We're not slandering him. We just mm, are you. Well, Kendall might have slandered him, but that's okay. Yeah. That's what Kendall does. Yeah. He's got to get the people going. Yeah, but as Michelle Tucker states out, Kendall is top notch. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, Ariel Tiz, bringing back Goron, question mark. So I'm sure this is going to be a very popular opinion on here, uh, but I will say that y'all have this all wrong. Nine out of ten times a buyout guy is insurance, right? Now, I agree that if there were a front court option that were out there that made sense for this team, you bring him in. Regardless of who it is, he's probably not part of your immediate rotation. The only way that player plays is if A, Markeith doesn't come back, but then one of Bam, Deadman, and maybe even Omer have to go down. Otherwise, the Heat are rolling two bigs in the playoffs. They're rolling Bam and Deadman, and I guess if you want to count PJ, that's three bigs. So it doesn't really matter. Same goes for the guards to me. It's just insurance. If uh, Tyler, who, I mean, at a certain point, we got to start having a conversation about why this guy keeps missing games. It seems like a trend, and I'm concerned about his durability going forward. Um, so if that continues, Victor Oladipo comes back. We don't know how, how what kind of shape he's going to be, and I'm sure he's going to get back in once he's in the best shape that he can be. But, like, are we confident in saying that he's going to be like ready to go and just in tip top shape and not get hurt again. So, I mean, if it's insur if it's, if it's injury insurance, who cares? I think our friend over at uh, Miami heat beat said it best. Alphonse Sydney said that Goron's role on this team is to be adorable. Udonis Haslam. And I think that's exactly <laughs> what it is. He would be here to be adorable. Udonis Haslam. And I'm for it. Bring him back for the vibes. I love Goron. I don't care if he's not going to play. He's not here to play. I want Goron back. I'm cool with that. Like as long as if you have to know that Keith is, going to return at some point if you know that bring him in because he's going to be better than any buy any buyout player the buyout market is legitimately horrible so yeah, yeah i agree with you there i'd rather buy nobody fuck that <laughs> i i watch you want you, huh? you want the 15th roster spot just there <laughs> he wants it for himself <laughs> right exactly if i, <laughs> I get that be... <laughs> vet, if i get that vet minimal guy yeah, we in oh, there boy. But listen, no, I'd rather go on and not play basketball for the Miami Heat ever again. Just being perfectly honest with you. 
I saw it. That looked like last year. It was fucking terrible. I don't think I want <laughs> he was, him. He was our best player in the. But you're not. You're not bringing him back to play, though. You're not. You're probably not bringing in anybody to listen, play. Listen, I don't want to embarrass him by bringing him in here and giving him Chikezi Paula's number because he ain't wearing number seven for damn sure. So <laughs> oh, he, he can wear twelve. Zoran Dragic wore twelve. He, he can wear six. Who cares what he wears, man? Like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about him wearing a Heat jersey, and I don't want to see it because it's Goran Dragic. He's washed. It's over with. Like. I don't want another cheerleader on the roster. Get out of here, man. He's a lifer. You get out of here. Okay. I, have... <laughs> I was going to get that. But no, like, I mean, no, the hell with that. The hell with that lifer shit. He can come back on a one-day contract and retire. That's it. Like, I don't want Goran Dragic on the I roster. also just don't want him to go to Milwaukee because I think that's the inevitability here. He not can actually that... help them. That's what I'm saying. It's not that he goes there and all of a sudden he's this fantastic guy that the Heat missed out on, but he's going to give them some scoring punch if he goes there. Their bench is trash. So I also kind of don't want him to end up there. I think you may have swayed me. Oh, well, that was easy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to do anything. You want to face Goron in the second round? And, like, I mean, again, like, Gabe, Gabe oh, probably put the claps Goran, on him, no, but no, I'm no, just no, saying. I'm not worried about I'm, I'm worried. Who is Goron guarding? Yeah, I was gonna say Max. Victor Oladipo, <laughs> Victor Oladipo in a pair no, of is, is going 40. thirty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to see Tyler Hero score forty? No, points? they'll hide. They'll, they'll hide him. No, for oh. sure. I agree with you. I'm just saying, like, he'll give them a scoring punch, and I kind of don't want to go against him and see him in a Bucks jersey. That'll make me sick. Nah, okay, I guess, but like, no, I don't want to play against him because I don't want to beat him in the playoffs in five. Bryn games. Forbes won number seven last year too, with the Bucks. It's all coming circle. Wow. Time is a flat circle. I hate the multiverse. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Kyrie. Um, what else can we talk about from this game, bro? We didn't let's, talk let's about talk Jimmy let's, at all. Almost, I think. Well, can we? Can we get to Jimmy? We have a. I'm about to say y'all watched the game. I didn't. Y'all should have been. He was pretty we good have, for the most. We most have good. we have some bench minutes to address. Oh. Okay. Bench minutes. So That's I was relatively displeased with the way that the bench played tonight. That was the incorrect uh, yeah, it's graphic, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it in just a moment, I think. Will we? Yeah, it's coming up. Keep talking. Against, Keep buying Against all odds, we're going to get there. <laughs> against all odds. Okay, so we, we talked about Duncan Wright just not doing enough. And now let's let's get to the bench, okay? Let's get to the bench because tonight <laughs> I was relatively <laughs> displeased with the way that the bench played. So as you guys know, my favorite segment, <laughs> Culture Minutes. A highly advanced, an- or I'd say it's supposed to say a highly advanced, but it just says a highly analytic, maybe in honor of the Haywood Highsmith. Uh, a Highsmith analytic that shows how Heat players perform off the bench. So let's get to it. Haywood Highsmith. Haywood Highsmith. Not much more to it than that, right? Okay, so Gabe Vincent, he's below Yurt. So we'll actually go with Yurt here first. He was better than Struess. Okay. Gabe Vincent was marginally better than Struess. Max Strus legitimately could not defend a parked car today. Like, if you were watching him on his closeouts to Jalen Brunson, it was actually mind-boggling that he would take a step to the left in order to make Brunson drive to the right when he literally... Just giving up ground was just so counterintuitive in those scenarios, and he did it like three times. Wide open drives, then compromise the defense, foul. Not a good game for Max Strus at all. And then offensively, obviously, the percentages weren't terrible, but you just need to fire off more shots. Um, and then Jalen Brunson, my guy, if you guys have been listening to the show or full court press for about a year now, um, Jalen Brunson has been one of my guys. I call him baby Kyle Lowry. He's a really, really good player. I know the a aggressive insurance. If you have insurance needs, make sure you call Lynette at nine, five, four, five, eight, one, eight, eight, zero, zero is blocking the top of the rating, but this was a pretty good, pretty almost historic bench player performance from another team. And I don't even think he comes off the bench. So credit to Jalen Brunson, man. I love watching him play. And uh, is that, did someone let Chris Silva into the building? Or is <laughs> How do you get it on here? <laughs> man, he's, always, he's always in the building somehow. I don't know how it works. But uh, yeah, this is uh, tonight's culture minutes. He Not happy signed. with the way the bench played tonight. Chris Silva has signed a record 14th 10-day contract with the Miami Heat. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I think we should give credit to my boy, uh, Kang Ricky J. Mark, who had a phenomenal nickname. In here, if I can scroll down to it, it's taking me so long to get there. I got you, bro. Uh, yes. Daddy L. Chartahena. I like that. That's fantastic. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I can give it like an eight. Like, I'm not even going to I like that, you. Ricky. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that, Ricky. That, I fucks with that, Ricky. Um, 
Yeah. That's that's crazy. It's actually just his name with an H. Wow. <laughs> I know. In right? honor of Haywood Highsmith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about Jimmy since y'all wanted to bring him up. And Ariel, since you did it, you get to start. No, Brian gets to start because he hasn't talked in longer than anybody. Brian, uh, talk about Jimmy Butler and why do they want to talk about Jimmy Butler? <laughs> I thought Jimmy was great tonight. I mean, what do you have, like 14 free throws? That's, listen. Your best friend dude, sucks. Huh? Sorry, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you said. No, it had nothing to do with you. My bad. Go ahead, bro. No, it's all good. Uh, yeah, man, like without Jimmy, this game is looks a lot uglier than it did. Um, not that it looks super ugly, but, you know, I think, I think it's definitely great. I mean, we all know how amazing Jimmy is, right? I, I'm a little surprised he's not an MVP conversation. He wouldn't win it. I don't know if he's, a, he's not a top three guy, but I don't know if he's like, I, I don't know. I know you get some recognition. I don't know. I mean, me being biased, but uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, fuck it. Oh, put it on. Put that Yo, on Adam is out of line. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In oh, February. Yo, oh. That's, that's, that's going in the yeah. Rolodex. Yo, yeah. what the hell? That boy Adam. Different, bro. Technical foul, did. Adam Barai. That's a oh red card. God. too. What do you mean? Yeah. 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 In yeah. February, man. Oh, shit. Adam Barai. Oh, Lee. That, that's top notch. That, my boy. I'm not even going to cap. That's top notch. I got to give my dog credit when he do right now. Adam Barai. <sighs> Goddamn. That was great. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> what the fuck? That was, that was foul. <laughs> that was so what are we foul. talking about? Horrible. <laughs> We're talking about Jimmy Butler. He, oh, he was okay. great. He was fantastic. Wish the team helped him out more. Uh, the 14 or say, however many free throws, the million free throws he took, kept us in the game. Uh, and you need that. You need a guy that can slow that when the offense is bogged down, get the free throw line, slow things down. But uh, he needs help, man. Offensively, you can't you can't rely on Jimmy Butler. You know, taking and making free throws if you want to win these games. But I'm I'm very happy with Jimmy. I mean, happy. He was the best player in the fourth tonight. Should have been Bam, but whatever. Mm. Oh, Chris Silver is from New Jersey. Is he not? He's yeah. not. He's from Africa. Yeah, I think he went to high school. No, I, I remember like Eric. I think he went to high school in New Jersey. Like, I mean, that's kind of what the dude is hinting I, I, yeah, at. The I was, I've never heard that. Boy I don't think he would come onto the comments and lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah like we sure. haven't seen anybody lie in the comments before. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bri- yeah, Bri- why, why, hey man, Adam lies story, in the comments. Why would he time. lie? Shout out Young OG for telling us a person and a little anecdote. So, yeah, little, absolutely. So, Shout out to Young OG. Appreciate you, bro. That boy don't claim New Jersey with a fuck. He claims Africa. Uh, Ariel, why did you want us to talk about Jimmy Butler so desperately? So I feel like we're going to look back on this game and like, you know, we're talking, I mean, the, the foremost talking point is the late game offense and how it bogged down. And a lot of that, I mean, those possessions are are devolving into Jimmy Butler hero ball or ISO ball. And, you know, it's not ideal offense. Um, and so, like, I don't think that's really indicative of the game he had. Like, he had a really good game. He kept them alive. In the third quarter, they were this close to getting the doors blown off. If Jimmy isn't having the quarter that he's having, that game's over before the, we even get to the fourth quarter. And I think that, you know, Jimmy kind of like, again, a lot of the offensive issues you saw in the fourth quarter, they were happening in the third quarter as well. The only difference was Jimmy was getting to the free throw line. He was just putting his head down and getting to the free throw line. I think he had like, I think he had double digits uh, points in, in the third quarter. And I felt like he kind of buoyed the offense a little bit. And then in the fourth quarter, it all fell apart. But dude had 29, 10, and three. Like, he had a really good game. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up and so that we don't look back on it and say that, like, you know, Jimmy is – we're not saying he's the reason he lost this game. I haven't seen that take anywhere. But I just want to, like, make sure that it, it comes across. And he had a really good game overall. The Heat's late game offense is not his fault, in my opinion. I think they just need to run the shit that they run during the game, right? And because they don't, Jimmy is the one who's going to go out there and try and get a bucket on his own. It's not really – his fault i think that's more a schematic issue um uh, but uh ricky better not be playing with me because i am going uh, yo, to flip let me uh, you just derailed my take and the show yeah I'm, don't worry about y'all can have whatever show y'all want to in the meantime and in between time Ooh, gonna... Ooh, baby to get five on five practice so this is from ira winderman victor oladipo has gone to the heats sioux falls sky force affiliate to get five on five practice not gameplay work in Heat stressing this is just a part of the process. Heat not practicing Wednesday, and then all-star break comes. So I think him being sent there should tell you, like, we should expect Victor Oladipo 
<laughs> Ooh, okay, come on, Ooh. come on now, come on now. Who, who, who yurted all over my screen? We cannot be yurting out in public now. That's ridiculous. But that's huge. That's he's huge. close. No, this he's is close. Massive. He he can't be more than like what? Three weeks away, maybe. I'm thinking. I'm Unless thinking like most. At least two weeks after All Star break, we should have seen Victor Oladipo. That's what I'm saying. Like, like three weeks wait. from now, top. It feels like he's close, man. So you're telling me under a month? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, initially, <laughs> initially it was, you know, the, the, the projection was January, February We're mid February, he's getting on court work. He, you know, they're putting out the videos, the heat account is and all that. So I think we've got to be two to three weeks away tops. The game, the, the algorithm is changing, today. ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Hey man, I, I don't think we've done, I think we've gone through most of this season, not really giving that part of, you know, what might happen to this iteration of the team, it's due process because like, he's such a wild card. Right. And, and the most recently that we've seen him, I mean, we only got him for four games last year and then he got hurt and all of that. He was inefficient before that when he was a rocket, but it's a major wild card for this team. Like they could be adding their fifth best player. Maybe like literally they could a best case scenario. Even in those four games, like we saw how much, how, how, much he rose like the defensive floor of this team. Like it changes just like the dynamic. I, it changes yeah. the dynamic greatly. Like even if he's not what he was, like he is going to be a better defender. Uh y'all gotta shut that off. We're gonna get it demonetized. Uh, we're gonna oh talk over God. it so we don't get it hey, hey. <laughs> Let me have fun. Victor Oladipo is coming back. <laughs> Look, if nothing else, if he doesn't shoot well, if he's slow, if he doesn't shoot well, if he can't, whatever. I mean, at the very least, you're getting a good defender who could be a really good defender, depending on what his legs are like. And you're getting a smart cutter who can catch and shoot and make threes, right? He was 40% from there last season. It's a huge upgrade. It's a, it's he an upgrade. Drives. could be a huge one. He drives, yeah. he drives, he drives. Rim pressure. We, oh my we gosh. talked about it all Bam. season. Bam's life as a roller could get so much easier for God bless Kyle Lowry's soul, but that man is not getting to the rim the way that he either was intended or the way that he used to. And it has made Bam's job as a roller significantly more difficult. Um, so I think having someone that can get there and then know how to drive and kick or finish at the basket is going to be huge for this team. We'll do a whole Victor Oladipo episode probably eventually, but uh, that's very exciting. I don't give a damn about you. Yeah, <laughs> boy's crazy. You literally. Yeah. We gonna hear about this later. <laughs> we are going to get fired. And I'm oh. deferring to Royal. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, do that. If blame me, all I want to do is jam pep us right now and <laughs> geek out, bro, because we're getting Vit all the depot back, which means we're winning the fucking title. I just want to put that out there. Everybody should know I had it first. <laughs> Been saying this for years. Been saying it for years. <laughs> 2022, could, Victor Oladipo comes back. But it could Fair go either way. Winning the title. We're winning the title. CGW. So the first victim on our next rampage to the title is the Charlotte Bumblebees, as my wife like to call them. <laughs> they are trash. Your mama look like a pepper hoe. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Charlotte going to be the next <laughs> opponent. They play on my daughter's birthday. So I might not do the show, but then again, oh, I might. W. That's a W. We don't oh, even have to go around. We don't even have to go around the horn here. But we're gonna do it anyway because the people love to hear y'all boy talk about y'all predictions for these next games. So we're gonna start with Brian. Brian, the boy feeling good. The boy feeling good. Double digit win. Uh, they're gonna do it for your daughter, Royal. Like we already know what That's it right. is. We know what it is. Like this is it's easy. It's easy. It's easy good. money. Easy money. Got it out, Cartagena. The boy feeling good. Pepa y agua para la seca. Todo el mundo en parte en la discoteca. We're blowing that shit out, okay? Charlotte, don't care. I think Greg Sylvander is gonna. Greg Sylvander is gonna be there. That's an easy W. Uh, maybe it isn't. Who knows? Liar Leif shows up. I don't know. But I think it's gonna be a good game for the Miami Heat. Uh, they will not let my my dog Greg down. Eminem played on Sunday, and Greg's gonna have a ball on Thursday. That's Let's go. Be- that's going to be more culture and guts than they've ever experienced in their lives with Greg Sylvander in the building. Yes, sir. Tough the Ramakan. The boy feeling good? The boy feeling good. Charlotte fucking sucks. The Heat are going to just destroy him. No no analysis needed. 
For sure. Uh, Aaron Latias, will the all-star LaMelo ball lead his team to victory against the Miami Heat, a.k.a. the boy feeling good? So the boy is feeling good. The boy also wants to say that the Hornets do not suck. I don't know why like three of y'all have said this. They're, they're, they're solid. They're not a great team. Um, but it is the great Royal A. Shepherd's daughter's birthday. And so you know what that means. The Heat are going to blow that shit out. What the fuck are you talking about? fuck is you talking about? And that's all there is to it. It's all good. <laughs> The heat about to blow that shit out. Fuck you talking about as these guys have already illuminated you all. Uh, oh, I'm dead too loud. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> My bad. But yes, indeed. The Bumblebees are terrible. LaMelo Ball. It, I don't know. For some reason, they don't play him as much as I think they would. Like, their budding star. Like, he gets benched a lot. It's because he probably does stupid shit on the court. It does not matter. Miami showed you last time that uh, they're in a class, in a different class than the Charlotte Hornets. So, I mean, th- that's just going to play itself out. So we're in it like nine minutes early, but I'm hot and I'm sweating and stuff. So we got to go. So thank you guys in the comments as always joining us, making the show much more fun than it would have been without you. Nope. Uh, CBT dash Florida. Uh, okay. I'll do it since you put it up. So we want to thank another sponsor of the five reasons sports post game show. And that's CPT dash Florida. Uh, if you have any small business security, or IT needs, make sure you visit cpt photocom or give them a call at 954-963-2775. They got all of this wonderful stuff that they offer you. Make sure you mention five reasons, and I think they give you a discount on any security service that you may get. So, want to thank them, and then we're not thinking the third one. Don't worry about it. You don't have to look for it. No scrub. So, thank you guys in the comments, as always, for joining us, making the show much more fun than it would have been without you. Thank you to my man, Jonathan Rumlacan, Ariel Latias, <laughs> Brian Young, and Gadiel Cartagena. Um, what's going on in this private chat? <laughs> no, no, no. This is just funny. Uh, young OG, I appreciate the moxie and the effort, but no one is going to watch Chris Silva high school highlights right now. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> oh, oh, bro. He got time steps and all for motherfuckers in there. Like, he's been grinding. Like, I respect the effort at the same time, but I'm gonna go watch eight years worth of Victor Oladipo highlights right now. Okay, so that's that's where we're at. Ricky J. Martin said he about to join the stream. My brother, you got the fastest fingers in the West. Play the video, Jonathan. It's coming. Hold on. Wait. Jimmy Buckets. Clutch time. Tyler Hero. What a finisher he's become. Main Ola Depot. Oh. That's right. You better mean mug after you dunk on somebody that way. <laughs> <laughs>